called Fallout Boy. Planning on a runway in Chicago. My name's Pete. I play bass. And, uh. My name is Joe Troman. Um, I'm 33, <laughs> and I play the B strings. And my hands are tied to pages and to bring you back tonight. The headphones will deliver you the words that I can't say. Andrew John Hurley, play drums. started, we were the worst band ever, playing the worst music you have ever heard. Um, we got better as time went on. I have known Pete for a bit, and asked him to do this uh, metal band with me that didn't go very well, and um, then we kind of, me and him kind of joked around about doing a uh, pop punk, I guess, type band. Um, while he was still in his band, Arma Angelus, which was a hardcore band. Joe and me started playing in a band that we wanted to be similar to bands we listened to growing up, like The Descendants and Green Day and Lifetime. <laughs> Looking for um, people to be in the band. We're looking for a singer and a drummer. And I met Patrick by mistake in a Borders Books when I was talking to my friend about neurosis. That dude weirded himself into the conversation. I know who neurosis is. <laughs> I'm a freak. Never met him before, and uh, we ended up striking up a conversation. And um, he informed me that he was looking to start a band with this guy from Ray Strader, who was a hardcore band I liked a lot. And uh, I was like, yeah, do from race chairs and I'll try it out. They came over to my house to practice, and I met them in shorts and an argyle sweater. <laughs> friends with Pete for a long time. I knew Joe for a while. They needed a drummer and I, and like everyone in the other bands I was in was doing full time stuff, whether it be like school or other bands. So like, did Fall Out Boy for a tour, it worked out. I knew that I was uh, destined for great. a cargo van with no seats, two front windows, no heat, no air conditioning. We didn't have a trailer, uh, we slept on our equipment. And the steering wheel's yeah. locked from left. And there's a flower on the side. There's a flower on the side, which meant that we like to uh, <laughs> I almost died a couple times and started off the tour with a breakdown. And hilarious. It was a sick breakdown. There was a lot of mosh. It was, a it was like a hate breakdown. breakdown. From there, Fall Out Boy began and began completely unserious in the basement due to boredom and to us being sick of 
you know, playing heavy music all the time and it's come full circle to become the main project and obviously we do it as our job now, so it's bigger than we ever expected it to get, I guess. But like when we were recording Take This To Your Grave, what we wanted was this record that didn't stop. Um, we wanted a record that, there's a couple records in my collection, you know, that I don't skip any tracks on, and that's what we wanted Take This To Your Grave to be. Smart studios, you know, and Nirvana recorded there, and Smashing Pumpkins recorded there, and like, um, and going into a real studio, that that mixing board, like, Bowie recorded on that board. It's amazing. Stressful. There was a lot of work. We had to write a couple songs and, uh, in the you know on the. This is Fall Out Boy, and welcome to our van exit. Um, first of all, this is the inside of the van. And that was a window at one point. Oh, that's a tree. That was insane. Oh, the, like, dude, the window shattered. The glass went all over. Yeah. 
So fucking crazy. So where are we and what's going on? So we're in, Le we're in Lamar, Pennsylvania right now. It's like the middle of fucking nowhere. We're on our way to New York to uh, film a video for uh, Grand Theft Auto. It's not in the more forest like area and the van is now totally the trailer is totally. No one got hurt, but uh, no, we're all sitting here laughing about it because it was so much fun. This is what from the inside of the van. Where's the box for these? Joe's just, Joe, Joe's just trying to figure out how to get out to see a girl in New York. He doesn't even realize the band's really crashed. And Pete's, and Pete's just trying to figure out the best angle to do with uh, this, this video and uh, the pictures. And he's uh, he's uh, bragging to uh, to the dude from Fooled by Ramen about how awesome the footage is right now. That's what he is. Oh, man. Bad news first or good news first? Well, I'll, do, I'll give you the good news first. So you don't, so get, so you don't get bad. Uh, the camera's fine. Uh, the mess tour is not gonna happen. Patrick is totally fucking done. He's not. Yeah, he's not gonna be the man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I definitely need some black eyes. Here's, here's the little tree. Wait, wait, this is the black eyes. No, no, I got it in here. Okay, you got the black eyes. I was asleep when we uh, <laughs> slid off the road in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. We slid into a forest, and me and Andy were in the death seats, and I'm really glad that I'm not dead. Just this, it was really violent, and all this, you know, that left side just shattered. It was pretty crazy, and if I was in the seat in front of me, sitting where I was, belted into the side, I probably would have gotten my head smashed or something, I don't know. Life slowed down to a snail's pace, where everything, where I felt completely out of control. Half an hour into his drive. Swerves a little, isn't paying attention, hits the brakes, we go colliding 70 miles an hour into a forest, demolishing the van, the trailer. Long story short, I take a Mustang to New York and now I'm a millionaire. I'd say my favorite fall boy moment is just when you see the crowd singing back in the lyrics and you can I could hear them louder than Patrick. It's just one of the most intense feelings there is. You never want to be up there, at least I personally never want to be up on stage and have it be a routine and you just feel like you're going through the motions and like, this is the move I do here and this is how I feel, like, like I want there to be feeling and I want like the songs to affect me. on tour, almost every tour we've gone on so far. Uh, I, get, I get by with enough to eat. We've driven, you know, we've had 16 hour drives and we've had like, we've had like 24 hour drives before, you know, and it's just like crazy. Like. And here is your purse. like a larger crowd and like bigger places like sometimes you have to play it like those shows and like have to have a barricade for like the safety of everybody so like it's just being able to bridge that that gap between between people and still be able to connect with people and that was cool like it was us learning how to do that and like 
trying some stuff and probably failing at it, and then trying some stuff and realizing what's successful. And here is your... Favorite Fall Out Boy show. Um, it's probably the show we played in Wheaton Community Center, and uh, they were expecting about 300 kids. And ended up it was the end of a tour, and uh, it was a community center, and they ended up having about 700 kids through the door. And uh, at the end, during Saturday, um, there was a free for all. Kids came on the stage. The sound guy turned off all the equipment, pulled the plugs on our amps. Uh, someone ended up throwing him into the crowd. Um, it was just a near riot. It was pretty awesome <laughs> in retrospect. But uh, Chicago shows have always been the best and the coolest. Um, there's other places that are cool in the country, but this will always be at home. The show where I got to give Pete stitches because it really had to take out my name on his head. It was pretty famous. St. Louis. St. Louis. Chicago is always the best. Um, I guess the last show we played at Chicago in the, bo the Bottom Lounge was the best show. It was, awesome. it was just the most songs we've ever played. I think the most energy we've ever had. And it was just really tight. One night we played at a uh, movie theater in Des Plaines, Illinois, that uh, basically only hosts like Bollywood movies. And um, they rent it out for punk shows every now and then. And um, it was us, Motion City Soundtrack, and 504 Plan, and um, it was this awesome summer night, and there were there were only a few kids there, but the kids that were there were awesome, and the bands were awesome. It was just a really fun night. Outside my front window, this story's going somewhere. He's well hung and I am hanging on. This fall, we, we signed with Island Def Jam, and uh, um, I have to say, one of the most, one of the coolest experiences. Like, it's something that I never thought I would do in a million years. Be able to tell your parents that you know, all the years were. They thought, you know, everybody was wasted, we were wasting our time and all the money they spent and all the practices they had to put up with and all the man they had to buy. Um, it's cool to be able to be like, look at this. It's like the face of determination. Island was official. I was on my way to Madison and I, like, screamed in my car and cried a <laughs> little. It was, it was just awesome. Like I've always wanted to do a band as as like my job, and I actually like have a chance at my dream. As a music writer, uh, one of the things I've tried harder to do on this record is to please us, please the four of us, before. Before really thinking about what other people are going to care about it. A girl has never emailed Joe. This one you live a lie, buddy, for yourself, but I'm never going to believe it. I don't think that, like, you know, we're ever going to stop being Fall Out Boy, so it's all just Fall Out Boy songs, but I mean, we went into the studio, you know, last time with this intent to have this, you know, record that just pounds in your ear, and I think that it'll be, like, a little different, you know? I think the melodic parts will be more melodic, more dynamic, the heavier parts will be heavier. It's going to be a little bit darker, um, it's going to be a little less, it's going to be a little more, more danceable sometimes. I'm going to try to do a lot less chugging and a lot more um, oh baby baby sweetheart. Kind of definitely a lot of sex. There's a lot more, you know, slinky outfits and, um, you know, uh, 
garter belt. Um, but the front of it's gonna have him wearing a diaper, <laughs> and the record's gonna be called Do You Wanna Slip Into Someone? <laughs> trying to push ourselves musically and write more mature songs, you know, an evolution I guess, and drawing I guess is the same thing. I wanna I wanna strip it down a little and play more musically, but I also want to like spice it up a little more maturely with like little things that you know I would I wouldn't have thought of a year ago. Not only to aspire to be a better person, but to be honest with yourself and to be honest with your fans. Like, like, hey, this is who I am, and like, that's like, we're a year away from the experience of the last record. And like, we've been on tour. Our life is different. Like, we're not the same people we were. And I think it's important that it's like not always bad and it's not all good, but like, there should be like an honest portrayal of how our lives are and like how this has affected us, and like, hopefully that people will want to go on that journey with us. We're gonna tour till forever. We're gonna put out this new record. And it's gonna be awesome. Um, I hope that I'm still doing this in 10 years, in some extent, you know, some form or another. At least that I hope I still know these people, I'm at, and that it's given me the chance to see the world with my friends, which is a whole different vantage point to see the world from the back of a man. Um, I'd recommend to anybody to do that. This is the best job in the world. I hang out with my friends in a van and play music. It's Amazing that I've tricked somebody into letting me do that. Listen, listen, listen. Tonight is all about.